Washington Johnson exclusively in the chair. Welcome to you, Bell. So we call you Bell. That's not your real name, but we're going to protect your real identity. You are probably right now, pound for pound, the most infamous student in America. <laughs> How do you feel about that? It's pretty absurd. I mean, I would have never expected, like, this would ever happen. <laughs> really? I mean, look, you're obviously very, very bright because you're doing this course. What is the course you're doing at Duke's? Um, I'm a women's studies and sociology major. And what does that, what does that mean? What does that cover? Um, basically, we study um, history, politics, economics, but from a female narrative. Right. We study so, gender. so you're obviously very bright because there were over 30,000 applications for the course. Only 3,000 people got in. So we have to assume you are a very, very smart young lady, right? So I'm, I'm surprised that you are surprised given how smart you are, that what you're doing in your spare time has caused such a kerfuffle? Well, I mean, I think to be perfectly honest, um, if I was just another college girl who does porn, this would have been like a day of news. But I think that because I came out in defense of myself mm -hmm. um, and because I really talked about how much porn empowered me and I really told my story, I think that that's what set this story apart. Let me just read a little bit of what you said. This is what you said in your own defense. For me, shooting pornography brings me unimaginable joy when I finish the scene. I know I've done so and completed an honest day's work. It's my artistic outlet, my love, my happiness, my home. I can def def definitively say I've never felt more empowered or happy doing anything else. In a world where women are so often robbed of their choice, I'm completely in control of my sexuality. As a bisexual woman with many sexual quirks, I feel completely accepted. It's freeing, it's empowering, it's wonderful. It's how the world should be. Yes. <laughs> you really believe all that? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think that... Do you think it's simply going to be the happiest you, you're ever going to be in life is making adult movies? Absolutely. I mean, well, you know, not in my whole life, but we are in a society we, where we are so repressed every single day. Um, we're told that sex is bad. We're told not to have sex. We're told not to show our bodies, and that's really true for women. And to be in porn and to be able to be naked and to be able to be free and have that sexual autonomy, it is so incredibly freeing. There will be lots of people watching this who will be feigning outrage and yet secretly probably looking at porn quite regularly themselves. Do you think there's a hypocrisy in the way that people treat pornography in America? I mean, absolutely. I mean, um, I think 80% of the world's traffic of, um, on the Internet is pornography. And I think that probably every single person at some point in their life has watched pornography. So I think it's extremely hypocritical that the same industry or the same society that consumes me is also condemning me. Now, it, was a, it was a powerful piece you wrote, very provocative, got lots of attention. I want to know the reaction from the university itself first. How have they responded to this? Uh, they've been very supportive of me. Um, we're working really hard to make sure that um, I'm safe and that... Um, I mean, you're here in Los Angeles, you're working in the porn industry right now. You've taken days off uh, college to be here. Yes. Are they happy with you doing that? Um, well, it came to a point where um, I felt so unsafe on campus, both mentally and physically, that um, we decided that it was better if I took a few days off. Because your real identity was exposed by a fellow student, right? Yes, um, and being on campus was just um, mm. a really um, upsetting experience for me. So we wanted to just give me some time to reflect and to think. Right, but you're actually here working, though, aren't you? Yes. Not really thinking too much. I mean, you're making movies. Well, you know, the really cool thing about being out here is um, I'm surrounded by people in my industry. So I'm surrounded by support. I'm surrounded by people who I can talk to about the stigma that I face on, an, on every day. So that's, what, that's why I came out here, was to have that support that you can't find anywhere else. Let's go back to the, to the reason that you decided to do this. Why did you get into this? Obviously, you, you, you're 18, so this is the only decision you've been able to take very recently. Why did you do it? Well, um, the financial aid that I was given to pay for my tuition was insufficient and um, it was just a really enormous financial burden on my family. Um, I was asked to pay about um, $47,000 a year. And, I and the, the breakdown, we've, we've got it here. This is the, the 
Duke University breakdown, the estimated cost of attendance for 2013 to 14 is tuition and fees 45,000, rooms 6,000, board 5,800, books and personal expenses 3,500. Estimated cost of attendance in total $61,000. I mean, it is an obscene amount of money. <laughs> it's, it's, it is absurd, and that doesn't even reflect how much it actually costs when you add in the plane tickets and the books. And it's very expensive to go to college. And your family are simply not in a position to, to meet this kind of cost? It's $60,000 a year. I don't know how many families can afford that. That's a lot of money. And, um, you know, I'm not the only person in my family. My family has other expenses. How many siblings do you have? I have two siblings. And you've taken a position you don't want to talk about your family's reaction to this. But I guess it's fair to assume if they were completely supportive, we probably would have heard from them by now. So it's obviously a very difficult situation for you and your family. Do you have any regrets about going public about all this and the fact your real identity is out there and people have worked out who your family are? Do you, do you regret that part of it? What I regret, and um, I would advise any other girl who's thinking of entering this industry the same thing, um, I regret not telling my family from the get-go. I think that was a really big mistake. I think that um, I really kind of isolated myself by not telling them. And I think that um, not telling your family when you're you know, doing sex work, it's a very isolating experience. I mean, I, you know, I've got personally, I've got no moral hang-up about what you do mm -hmm. or the industry mm -hmm. you're in. But if I'm honest, you know, I've got a young daughter, very young, only two years old, but if she, when she was your age, decided to do this, I would be pretty upset as her father. I wouldn't like it. And I suspect I, most fathers would feel the same way. There must be, a, I guess, a, a difficulty there for you and your family, right? I mean, how do you think you're going to come through all that? Right, well, um, I've talked to a lot of other sex workers, and um, I think what really is concerning my parents and other parents um, is, is my child safe? Is my child, um, is my child being exploited? Um, is, my is my child enjoying what they're doing? And I'm not being exploited. I love what I'm doing, and I'm safe. So um, I think that um, we need to come to a level of understanding about that. And, you know, a lot of the negative feelings about pornography really come from this narrative that we've been hearing that pornography, all of pornography is degrading and okay. all of it is Okay, well, hold that thought. Let's come back to, uh, after the break and talk about that because mm -hmm. you're talking about it in a very sort of celebratory way. You know the arguments against it. I want to get into that with you after the break. What we always talked about into effect, you're going to have to start hooking. You know, you jest, but these are the exact circumstances people find themselves in right before they start having sex for money. Yeah. Or making porn. What? You got an idea? We could make a porno. Not the idea I was looking for. Clip from Kevin Smith's 2008 film, Zach and Miri make a porno. As we all know, truth is stranger than fiction. And my guest is a real-life porn actress who's paying her college tuition at Duke's University by making videos. She uses the name Belle Knox, and she's back with me exclusively. It is quite fascinating talking to you because... You are very smart. You're obviously, you're well-spoken, very eloquent about this. And your position on it all is that actually there's nothing to be ashamed of here in terms of the work that you're doing. Right. Why do people profess to find it so shameful, do you think? Well, that comes from thousands of years of patriarchy and thousands of years of religion um, that leads us to this point where we so deeply fear... Um, sexuality. So you don't feel that you're being used by an industry which has infamously used women for many decades. You're doing women's studies at Dukes. You know, you, you, you won't be oblivious to this. Many women have had very bad experiences in the adult film industry. You don't feel that at all. No, I don't. And um, I wouldn't necessarily agree with... Um, kind of the, the statement that, you know, most women in the industry have had negative experiences. I think you hear about those experiences because a lot of the times it's um, propped up by a political agenda. Um, but, you know, I think that there is a, there are a lot of women in the pornography industry who really love their jobs and who find it really empowering. Are you able to hold down a normal relationship 
with a man or woman at the moment if you're doing this? I mean, can people that operate in this industry do that? Well, <laughs> the, the saying that kind of goes is, um, if you're having a relationship outside of the industry, it's got to be weird in some way. Um, but no, I mean, I'm not in a relationship right now, but um, I have met a lot of men and women who have no problem with me doing pornography. So I really don't think it'll be an issue with my future relationships. What about the students at Dukes? Because there's been a lot of hostility and I would imagine some support. What's been the, the breakdown percentage-wise, do you think, from all the students you've had any direct reaction from? I think it's about maybe 70% are okay with me or in favor of me. A lot of that's like the LGBTQ community has really rallied around me. Um, and then there's like the 30% of, you know, the frat guys um, and the girls who just hate me. If you got married mm -hmm. in 10 years time or whenever and you had a, a baby girl, would you want your daughter when she was 18 to be doing what you're doing? I would want my daughter to make an informed decision about um, her career and um, I think it's absolutely her choice. You wouldn't, you, you don't think you would try and discourage her as a mother? No, I think that it's her choice to do pornography. I would try my very best to make sure that she was safe and that I knew what she was doing and I knew where she was going, which is where I went wrong with my family. Um, Did you worry that you'll never have the same relationship with your family again? No, I don't worry about that because at the end of the day, your family loves you and um, it's that love that will keep us together. And I think that, I mean, really any family who would disown, you know, their daughter for doing pornography, it's a pretty questionable ethics. I mean, my family loved me six months ago when I wasn't a porn star. What would make them not love me now? So they haven't disowned you? No. And you don't expect them to? Um, no, I don't. It's going to be difficult for you back at Dukes, isn't it? I mean, you obviously, now it's so public. Here you are on CNN talking about this. You've got to go back into normal student life, <laughs> and presumably you're going to carry on in between making more of these movies. Right. It's not going to make your life any easier. Are you ready for that sort of constant onslaught of attention it's going to bring you? Well, I mean, the downside now is I can't really go out anymore. I can't really go to, you know, a lot of parties or gatherings because um, I'm just met by a lot of hostility from people. But um, I'm confident. Are you getting hostility from men or women? Male women. students? It's or a lot of women, yeah. which um, I think that a lot of that comes from um, maybe they caught their boyfriend watching my porn. Um, but, I mean... Like I was saying, you know, I can't really go out like I used to, um, but I'm confident that... You said that with a sort of wry smile, as if, <laughs> as if that was quite funny, but I mean, it wouldn't be funny for that woman if that's indeed what happened, <laughs> would it? It's all very sisterly of you to think that's funny. There's nothing funny. wrong with watching porn, I mean, and I think that, I mean, to be mad at me because your boyfriend's watching porn or to be jealous of me... Um, it's all so petty and it's all so ridiculous, but that's just me speculating. <laughs> Bell, stay with me. We've got a little a short break coming up, and then I'll ask you how you got this porn name because I'm told it's your first pet normally and then your first street name. <laughs> right now, my uh, guest, Duke University student and porn actress Bell Knox. How did you get the name Bell Knox? Because there's supposed to be this formula, isn't there? First pet, mine was a cat called Rocky, after Rocky Balboa, and then your first street name, which in my case was Oxbottom Lane. So I would, if I went into the industry, be Rocky Oxbottom. How did you get yours? Did you use that formula? <laughs> no, actually, um, mine is kind of strange. Um, so it's Belle after... Um, I really like the name Belle from, like, Beauty and the Beast, and also Belle from the show Diary of a Call Girl. Belle du jour? Yeah. Right. Um, and Knox? Knox is... Um, I've always had this, like, fascination with Amanda Knox. Like, just her case really fascinates me. You're named after Amanda Knox? Yes. Is this all a bit creepy? Hmm? Well, she's just a really interesting person. I mean, I'm not saying I support her or anything, but mm. she seems like a really cool person to just, like, talk to about. Like, she seems very intelligent. I don't know. How much do you make from your movie making? What do you get for a film? 
Um, I can make about uh, $1,200 each scene. Which is a lot more than you could get if you were working as a waitress in North Carolina, for example. Absolutely. And so it's less, um, less time-consuming. I set my own schedule. Um, I don't have to worry about you know, not getting sleep or not doing my work because I'm working three jobs. Well, Belle, it's been fascinating talking to you. Uh, best of luck back at Duke. I think you're going to be in for a fairly rough ride, but I suspect <laughs> you can probably handle it. It's been good to meet you. You too. Thank you. That's all for us tonight.